Well, hello everybody. I'm back, and I've got a slightly different type of hacking video for you here. I'm not going to hack any math per se, but rather I'm going to hack math notation. Now, I'm inside Blackboard right now. Let me click open this discussion post that I created, just as you would do, create, create a discussion post. And let me read it out loud to you because it really describes the tasks of this video and the aims of it. I get a lot of student emails every semester asking how I do the slick math notation like fractions and exponents in the bulletins. I'll be focusing most of this video on creating beautifully rendered math ex expressions, but a lot of what's shown here will have value in any online course. Better yet, what's taught in this video is completely independent of any course delivery system, be it Blackboard, which I'm in right now, or Desire to Learn, which we will be transitioning to in a couple of semesters. The video will cover basic HTML, and code cogs. The six tasks below will take us home. So I'm going to teach you how to hack math notation in your bulletins for any class that you have going forward. If you want to stand out and make your posts look nice, this is the video for you. So the first task I have at hand is how to make this sentence bold. Let me scroll down and edit the message. So here is the normal text enter, entering screen for a bulletin and I would love to be able to resize it. It is supposed to be resizable. Give myself space to work. You know I consider that to be the number one more rule of craftsmanship but you can see that that feature doesn't work. Those, bullet, those um, buttons did not re, uh, relocate and so for the last couple of years I've been forced to work in a very narrow space and you will be too as long as we're in side blackboard. But we can make it work. We can scroll down and find that sentence and there it is. I want to make it bold. Now theoretically you could enable the HTML creator and get after everything I'm going to do here in there. But I have found this to be a bit buggy too. Instead, like I said, I'm teaching you something independent of any course delivery system. And here's the trick right here. I'm going to click this, check off on this. As soon as I do this, it changes the universe that we're sitting in. It tells the machine to use hypertext markup language. Now that's the lingua franca, the lingua franca of the web. It, every web page that you've ever dealt with is written in HTML, hypertext markup language. And so what happens here is Blackboard will run this text through some software that will look for tags that decorate the text or provide other features and functions. One of those tags is the set of tags called the bold tags. I'll begin the opening tag here. It looks like that. B is for bold and hypertext markup language is nice that way. There's a lot of mnemonics involved. Now everything to the right of that will be bold until we hit what's called the closing tag. The closing tag looks remarkably similar to the opening tag except it has this slash right there. Now when we do a preview, check it out, the sentence is now in bold. Okay, well suppose, suppose you used the wrong slash there. Suppose you used, or, or you forgot the closing tag, or you, you typed it wrong somehow, for instance with that particular slash instead of the other one. Well what would happen here is the markup language reader would say begin bold right here, and it would go until it hits a closing tag, but there is no closing tags, and so it will simply run right off the page. I'll show you that with a preview. As you can see, the bold begins where I said. This tag is, not, is no longer ignored by the reader, the hypertext markup language reader. It's just considered regular text, and the bolds run off the page. In fact, they run into the, the buttons down here, and anybody responding to this post their post would also be in bolds until somewhere it hit a closing B tag. So you can see how important it is to do one at preview and two to remember to get those closing tags correct and not forget them for sure. So how about italicizing? It is also nicely mnemonically named. It is I for italics. There is the opening tag and here is the closing tag. Now when we do a preview, as you can see, uh, my tag here for closing the, closing the bolds 
has been read, and my tags for slanting text are now in effect as well. So, how about task number three? Make the exponents look nice using basic HTML. Okay, well, you see, most of the tags in HTML, and there's hundreds of them, and I'm going to send you to a site and show you a site where you can learn some of this stuff. Most of the tags deal with text formatting and some other features. Very few are math markup tags, but one that you might use a lot is the exponents. Now, this is really hard to read, and what I want to do is show you how to do those exponents that are much sweeter on the eyes. And that is the superscript tag. And it looks like this, sup for short, superscript, and then the exponent, and then the almost identical closing tag, like that. And so the that will be read by the machine as 3x to the seventh power. And I wanted to show you that it could also do negative exponents. Again, the opening tag, superposition, the exponent, and then the closing tag telling the machine telling the software to, to stop making exponents right there. Let's do a preview and scroll down and have a look. And you can see here is the horrible notation. It's acceptable and I've been dealing with it for years, but here is a much nicer way of looking at uh, this expression right here. It's so much more readable. So we're marching on and you are learning basic HTML and I wanted to recommend a wonderful site for learning it if you you want to continue on I think honestly I think it should be taught in high school I think we should all know it it's the underlying code of the web it's that important so let me show you that here is a really nice site w3schools.com I like it because you can click on the tags you want to learn over here and because the try it yourself if I was to click on this you 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 can type in one window and see what it looks like when it's read by the HTML reader in the other window. So that's that's really sweet. Okay, moving along here, we are down to number five, only two more to go. And this is really the, the gist of this video. I want to create a rational expression, that is a fraction, in code cogs. Uh, this fraction right here, three over the square root of two. Now code cogs, and here is the URL for it, is an essential tool for rendering math notation. In fact, this thing is a gem. Without this, math teachers would be would be crippled. And I know because I started out before code cogs even existed and creating beautiful math notations was an incredible chore back in 2002. And let me show you the site for code cogs and here it is. Now, this palette of tools up here is where you select the notation you want. And you should explore it. Uh, there's a lot up in here. There's, look, the infinity symbol and real numbers symbol. And over here is intersection and union. And over here is the set notation symbols like less than and greater than and greater than or equal to and so forth. And lo there's, a lot, there's a lot here. The ones I use the most when I make my exams or when I create math notation for my bulletins is this particular palette over here. In particular, the exponents and the fractions, the square root, and the roots with indices. And that is what I want to do right here. I want to create a fraction. I said it was going to be 30 over the square root of 2. So I select this, and it types it right here. Now, what will happen is this will be the first set of parentheses will be the top of the fraction. The second set will be the bottom of the fraction. Let me just go ahead and put in some numbers there and show you that when I type these in, it will appear down here in a what you see is what you get sort of way. So I'm going to type one half. And as you can see, it's rendered down here. Now, I've got control over this thing down here. I can change its size. I can, I can do other things. Let me make it just slightly smaller. Oh, how about even smaller yet? Okay, one half like that. And I said we were going to create a fraction and it had 30 in the top. And in the bottom, we were going to have not 2, but the square root of 2. So I'm in the bottom, in between these two parentheses, and I go up here and I select the square root symbol. And you can see it is appearing now down here. And I'm ready to type in what's underneath that square root symbol, 2. And there you go. Uh, there is the image 
that I can now download to my desktop in a particular um, image format, file format. I normally use this one when I'm making exams or, and this is the really main, th main thing about this site, down here is HTML code that you can copy and paste into your bulletins in your course delivery system. So here is the bulletin I'm working on and I said I was going to create this in code cogs. I have done that. I have copied that HTML and I'm going to paste it here like so. And now when we do a preview, check this out. There you see it right there. Now what's really amazing about this is that if somebody else comes along, um, all semester long I've been using this, but you might not have realized that these are clickable images. And when you click on this, what's going to happen is it's going to open up in your browser code cogs with this preloaded into the machine. Let me show you. There it is right there. And now you can actually start to solve it. And you could create yourself uh, a new fraction and you can work left to right and solve this and then come down here and copy and paste this into the bulletin showing the solution. And all that would work swell for you, absolutely swell for you, as long as you remember to click off on the Use HTML button. And that gets me to the last item on the list. I want to post this bulletin. But first, I'm warning myself here, talk about the preview bug and the paragraph and new line tags. So, okay, the preview bug. This is this is one that's it's really, I guess you could say aggravating. When I click on preview, notice that there's nice white space between these paragraphs and these things are nicely spaced with white space between them. And so you think, you know, this is the preview. What you see is what you're going to get. And when I go over here and I close the preview and I say post, you would think that I'm going to get that. So well, watch what happens. Let me post this. And now let's check it out. And that's not at all, you know, what we had. I mean, look at this. There's no spacing whatsoever. It's all been jammed together. And so why is that? Why is the preview and so much different than what we actually get? And the answer is, let me, let me go back to editing this. The answer is that when you click on this button and say use HTML, the software is now looking to for tags that actually create this spacing. The paragraph is no longer implied. You have to tell the machine to render a paragraph there. You have to put in the paragraph tag, which looks like this. And you, you might say, well, does that have a closing tag? I mean, shouldn't it be, here's the paragraph up here, it starts here, and it goes to here, and this is the closing tag like that, and then and so forth. And yes, that's the correct way to do it. Opening tag, always balanced by closing tag. But there's a nice shortcut, thankfully, because the paragraph tag is used so much, it will be a paragraph tag until it hits another paragraph tag, in which case it will start a new paragraph. So you don't need the closing tags for paragraphs. And I just can simply put them in as I go down the page, like so, creating that white space. Now, how about here? What I really like is, is for it to look like this. I don't want a new paragraph. I want just a new line. And the tag for that is called the break tag. And it looks like this. And like the paragraph tag, you don't need a closing tag. It will just simply be a line break until it hits the next paragraph or new line tag. So let me just finish this up by putting in the white space for new paragraphs. And when I post this this time, I won't get that shock that I got when I clicked it open the first time without this formatting. It won't all be scrunched together. Here's the last one. Let's do a post and let's look at our work. And now you can see it's nicely formatted. Sentences in bold. The italics is still there. Here's our HTML for exponents. And here is our code cogs. And there you go. So this is basic HTML and it is also code cogs. With what I taught you right here, right now, you should be able to, with a little bit of finagling around, embed YouTube videos because it's a lot like code cogs. You go and you grab some code and you paste it into your bulletin and voila, the video gets embedded. I'll challenge you with a few things 
in my bulletin post if you're interested in learning this. And of course, no one says you have to. It's just for it's just an answer for all the emails I get for people wanting to know how this is done. Okay, I hope it helps. Talk to you again soon.